Welcome back to Camera West TV. My name is Carlo, and on today's episode of Thumbprints and Signatures, we have the Leica 35mm f1.4 Sumalux FLE. That didn't spin all the way. <laughs> Whether you're in the studio or out traveling or in the field, the Leica 35mm f1.4 Sumalux is spherical is arguably Leica's most versatile lens in its current lineup. This lens has the ability to do it all and is part of the reason why many photographers keep this lens on their camera. What makes this lens so special and sets it apart from its previous versions is what's called a floating lens element, or FLE for short, and how we'll refer to the lens for the rest of the video. For those who don't know, FLEs are nothing new and have been used in other lens manufacturers in the past. But for this lens, the elements behind the aperture blades are constructed as a floating group that change position relative to the front lens group during focusing. In simple terms, the FLE takes the focus shift issue from the previous version of this lens and uses it to its advantage, especially for close focus. I personally own this version of the 35mm Sumalux and I've used it for a couple years on film and digital M bodies and I can confidently say that this is one of the best Leica lenses I've ever used. The way that this lens renders color is very true to what you see, especially on digital sensors and various film stocks. All the film that you see on screen was processed at Underdog Photo Lab in Oakland and I scanned it myself with my Pacon F135 scanner. I saw that there was a lowrider cruise happening in the Mission in honor of Mexican Independence Day, so I decided to take the M11 as well as this lens and go make some photos. We're out here in the Mission District in San Francisco. We're gonna go check out this lowrider cruise in honor of Mexican Independence Day. I have the 35 Sumalux FLE, ASPH, Elemento PQ RST. <laughs> um, it's not the new one, so figured it's good a time as any to make a Thumbprints and Signatures episode on this lens. Let's go make some cool photos. The way that this lens renders is truly unique. It's a mixture of the vintage Sumalux look as well as modern characteristics. And what I mean by this is you still retain the soft and dreamy nature of what the Sumalux line is known for, but mixed with the sharpness and contrast of a modern Leica lens. Its ability to isolate subjects at f1.4 is truly beautiful and captivating. Having the ability to open up to an aperture of f1.4 truly has its benefits, and it allows me to photograph across various lighting situations. I was able to show depth of field within wide shots at f1.4, causing my subjects to pop within the frame, and it was perfect for various wide and close-up portraits. This lens was introduced into the current lineup of Leica lenses in 2010, but at the time of filming this video, Leica just announced a brand new version of this lens, which we'll get into in another video. All right, breaking news. We have the brand new 35 millimeter F 1.4 Sumalux FLE version two. So we're gonna walk around and get some quick sample shots with this lens and talk about a little bit of the upgrades that they added to this lens. And then I'll compare my experience of using this lens to the version one. Hi. Oh, we're just taking pictures. For fun. Oh, okay. We'll be down in a second. Thank you. <laughs> you heard right. We have the new 35 millimeter F1.4 Sumalux FLE version two. So the main differences between the version two and the version one is that you have the integrated lens shade, which rotates out like so. 
you can see it's pretty similar to the style of the 50 APO lens. And now we have the addition of a new close focusing distance of 0.4 meters versus the 0.7 in the V1. This is pretty similar to the 35 APO Summicron M lens. And lastly, this lens has 11 aperture blades versus the nine found in the V1, and that results in more circular bokeh. Other than those changes, optically, both lenses are pretty much the same, with maybe the exception of updated coatings for the V2. Since I don't have the Visoflex, I basically have to use live view to do any of the close focusing on this lens, but pretty much after you go past 0.7 meters, the rangefinder just doesn't couple anymore. So if you are planning to use this on film, uh, you could try your hand at zone focusing, hopefully. Um, but if not, I would say this is mostly a digital lens and I'm sure it would work really well on film. But like I said, the rangefinder does stop after 0.7 meters. So it's a good way to test your zone focusing skills. Judging by the photos, you can see that both lenses are pretty accurate when it comes to color, and they're pretty close to what you see with your own eyes. But side note, I did make minor edits to contrast, white balance, and exposure. I left the colors relatively untouched. One of the biggest signatures to these lenses are its vignetting. Wide open at f1.4, there's pretty heavy vignetting around the edges, but as I mentioned in past episodes, I think it adds to the lens character as well as pull focus more towards your subjects. And if you're not a huge fan of the vignetting, you can easily correct that in post. My only gripe with the 35 FLE version 1 is that at times it didn't feel close enough or wide enough for certain situations. But I guess that's more of a complaint about the 35 millimeter focal length in general and not necessarily about this lens. But in the case of the Lowrider Cruise, I think it was perfect for the situation and I was able to have some variation within my photos. As for the 35 FLE version 2, I feel like the new closer focusing distance helped me get closer to my subjects, something that I wanted to do with this 35. But at times, I found myself wishing I had the Visoflex 2 just to nail critical focus at 0.4 meters. So I think in difficult lighting situations, it's not always easy to see the screen. In all honesty, I do think that the 35 Zoom Lux is a near perfect lens for most situations within film and digital photography. You have the ability to step in closer to the action or you can step back and view the entire scene. Mixed with an aperture of f1.4, you can pretty much shoot in any lighting situation, whether it's day or night. I feel that many film and digital Leica users could reap the benefits of the FLE version 1, whereas with the FLE version 2, it's obviously geared more towards digital photography. And now with the addition of the newer closer focusing distance of 0.4 meters, I can get much closer to give more attention to smaller details or tighter portraits. I feel like this lens opens up another world of possibilities, but again, it's not entirely impossible to use the FLE version 2 on film. You can still use it up to 0.7 meters, but after that, it's pretty much a guessing game, or you have to be insanely good at zone focusing, which, if you're stopped down, you could kind of guess it, but, you know, I feel like it's easier with a digital camera. In short, the 35mm f1.4 Sumalux a Spherical FLE version 1 and 2 are near-perfect combinations of past and present Leica characteristics. And I can almost guarantee that either version of this lens will remain glued to many photographers' cameras. Well, this concludes another episode of Thumbprints and Signatures. I want to thank you again for watching, and I hope that you enjoyed this semi-first look and semi-lens review and comparison between the version 1 and version 2, 35mm Sumalux FLE, a really long name. I know that there's been a lot of requests to see newer lenses, so I thought this was a good way to show off and give you a first look at the new 35 and highlight one of my favorite lenses, so I hope you enjoyed that. Well, like always, don't forget to like and subscribe and comment down below what you think about these two lenses. I do think that the newer version of the lens is very interesting and cool and can be used for all sorts of photography. I personally shoot a lot of film, so I think I'd probably still continue to have my version one, but who knows? Comment down below. Do you like the new one? Do you like the old one? or what else do you want to see on Thumbprints and Signatures? As always, my name is Carlo. Thanks for watching.